everyone. Welcome to Gord's Corner, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, here at Gord's Running Store. Uh, back with another review of a, an ultra shoe. Um, it's a bit of a fringe shoe for us because it's more of a... Some people use it as a trail running shoe for the winter time, and a lot of people use it more as a commuting shoe um, it, just to give their foot some added protection from the elements outside as well as give you a decent traction on the outsole from, from that perspective. Um, it's the Lone Peak uh, All-Weather 2 Mid. Uh, so the Mid basically gives a bit of a call around the, uh, the ankle. The identical shoe from the outsole, midsole, and the upper that's basically around the foot portion of the shoe as they're All-Weather Low. Um, but this one is basically the Mid added height for added protection that way. Um, their waterproof barrier on the on the boot is made by Event. In the, as I mentioned on a previous review, the Event used to be an application that applied to the exterior of the shoe. Some sort of educational process with, okay, how are we going to make these things waterproof? Uh, Gore-Tex used to do that many, many years ago as well. But um, in this case, it's a trail shoe. In some other cases, it's like uh, some of your outerwear clothing. Um, this one is going to get exposed to a lot of dirt and debris. When they put the waterproof barrier on the exterior of the boot, sometimes once, that, once the pores of that somewhat permeable barrier get plugged with dirt and soil, it's no longer going to be breathable from the inside, at least until you wash that that area that's been exposed to the dirt and debris until it gets washed clean then it can function again so a lot of these barriers you're finding now they're applying them to the inside of the shoe so when i take out the packaging on this one when you look inside there's a, a little bit of a silvery a really bright metallic -y gray type liner well that liner that is the event booty that basically the the upper of the shoe is is adhered to liner as it's closest to your foot this is about as far away as it can possibly be from being exposed to dirt and debris therefore it stays cleaner longer and because it's cleaner it's able to give you that ability to give you some permeability and breathability so the waterproof barriers the gore-tex upper type shoes they penetrate they stop the wind from going through as well as the rain here in Alberta, sort of the prairies, um, once the snow starts to hit, we're not really worried about wetness and rain and that sort of thing as they would on one of the coast, coastal sides of the, of the continent. Um, they're worried more about the wind and the wind doesn't go through these uppers. So they tend to be a warmer shoe or boot to wear on, on the feet from that perspective. The barriers of the old, used to have to get people to size up a half size at least almost every time the barriers are becoming a little bit more sophisticated they're getting a little bit softer a little bit more supple they're feeling a little bit more form fitting so going to your sh your shoe size that you wear in the non waterproof fabrics um, is a good place to start some people if you're always on the on the cusp of that size, uh, maybe you should go up, maybe you should go down. Um, you may size up uh, at that time, but start with the size you normally would go to. If you're already wearing the regular low peaks, start with, if you're wearing eight now, start there, maybe go up to the nine. Um, lacing, again, in the past, we've had few people who've used this sort of nylon looping. The problem I found in the past is the nylon loop just didn't get tucked in far enough before they do this heavy stitch on that part as far as the hold out seam in there. And when some people pull on it, pull on it, and then all of a sudden that little bit of thread that was caught, it gives away and that loop either comes apart or, or just it doesn't get held. Um, on the stitching all the way along, it looks like they've really, really gone at it um, to make sure that that's not gonna happen. They have your standard hiking boot type loop up here where you just loop it around when you're tying in that way. Um, um, if a person does have a little bit of loose heel in this style of shoe, sometimes I teach them a little bit of a, a trick of doing a lace lock between this eyelet and this one, but you almost need a third hand when you go to tie it up. So, but it can be done. Now, some people will complain in their hiking boots of my heel just constantly lifts, constantly moves. 
um, with this method. You just can't secure your heel as well. But if you can incorporate a bit of a lace lock down in this area of the shoe, that will help minimize that movement in that area. The shoe stack height, you're coming in at 25 mil stack height. Um, so a stand, same, same height as what the Lone Peak, uh, the regular Lone Peak has. Uh, they have the Max Track outsole on it. Um, if you notice the chevrons go in one direction on the forefoot, they go the opposite direction in the heel. Uh, the rationale for that is basically you're going up and down various types of terrain, giving you grip and traction. You're going up the hill and giving you confidence and, and some confidence when you're coming down a hill and descending. The little wing on the back also just strikes the ground a little bit, a fraction of a second sooner. So it gives you the sense that, okay, I've made contact, I'm touched down, I'm secure, I'm safe. Um, so all, all good things from that perspective. The ultra trail shoes for winter conditions or winter road conditions has been a, a fairly consistent go-to shoe. It gives it adequate traction on the snow and icy type surfaces, definitely on a packed snow uh, condition. They work beautifully with the event weatherproof, waterproof upper. Um, again, definitely a good uh, winter uh, shoe to keep your feet comfortable. Another unique feature with the Ultras is the really wide foot shape. So again, a big, big plus to the brand. Uh, so your feet can spread out and function like a barefoot inside the shoe, but and, and not be encouraged to roll in or roll out. And your toes aren't being pinched or crunched going into a cold weather type condition. Anytime you get your toes crunched, it does reduce some of the circulation to the extremities. So having more space tends to be a little bit more comforting for your feet to be to stay a little bit warmer as they expand as well. Um, retail in Canada, this guy's coming in at uh, $239.95. Men's comes in just a standard D width. Women's comes in a standard B width, again with that foot shape. Does have a little bit wider than your standard B's or D's width. Um, the, the men's color is the darker charcoal type gray. Women's has a little bit of a purple with a light blue lace on it to give it a little bit of flash of color. Weight wise, this guy is coming in on a champion in the heavyweight category. I think it's like four, I'll refer to my cheat sheets here. 428 grams and that's in a size nine. And the women's is coming in at 340 grams. Again, not your ideal shoe if you're running a Five Peaks race series through, or you're running a, a cross country race series through the winter months, but it definitely has the protective features of the waterproof uh, upper. Um, so your feet aren't gonna get cold. Um, some people, if you're using these shoes in the summertime as your hiker, um, they can be warm uh, because again, the permeable fabric will let the air out eventually, but at the speed that your foot heats up in the summertime. So my recommendation is you just wear the shoe more loosely tied on the upper portion of the shoe. Anticipate, yes, you're gonna have a looser fit and feel, your heel is gonna move a little bit more, but because of the looseness, it's the spaciousness around your foot that goes into the shoe that allows the air to escape. So it keeps the cool, the shoe a little cooler, a little bit more comfortable for the warm summer days of wear. Um, the, the difficulty would be when you get to a really technical section of a trail, then you would lock down, tie in a little bit more securely, get through the technical section and then open the shoe back up again, just to again, let your foot breathe and be more comfortable. Um, other than that, that's all I'm going to say about the, the Lone Peak All Weather 2 Mid from Ultra and uh, what they're coming to the table with. Feel free to send us your comments, uh, share the video with your friends, send us your comments. If, uh, if you know we've missed something or you've seen something out there you'd like us to review and we'll do our best to get it out there for you. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day and stay well out there.